it's so important to get the right team because the process from start to finish, like even before we select the property, is just so smooth and easy. To be honest, it couldn't be any easier. My name is Eddie. I live in Adelaide, South Australia. I'm a Frenchman, and I've been here for 20 years now. Definitely Australian slash French now. We wanted to invest for our future, and property is one of those things that you can leverage quite extensively from it, and therefore whatever capital you've got can go a lot further than anything else, whether it's shares or other investment. And that's really what attracted us to property. Look, there's risk in everything, right? I suppose at the end of the day, if you don't take any risk, you keep your money in the bank and it will do what it will do, which won't be a whole lot. The thing is, Australia is still a young country and we have many migrants coming in every year. There's so much reasons for the property market for at least the next 15 to 20 years to be pretty strong. The economy is strong, just with that backing going into property made sense to us. Whereas the share market, as much as the economy is strong and the company may be strong, if someone sneezes, all of a sudden the share market, I mean, today is down 1.5% because the inflation figures have come out as being a bit more pessimistic than expected. So it's just that lack of control with the share market. So you can make money out of the share market, but I think that the fundamentals in Australia for the property market just made sense to us. When we started, we didn't really know. We knew we wanted to do something and have a comfortable retirement, but we didn't know what it meant in terms of the strategy or the how to piece it together. It's going to vary. Obviously, everyone's got their own need and, and wants. The main two things are, you know, if your money was to stop today, how much would you need to cover that? Because that's the definition of financial freedom is if I've got enough in passive income or in investment income to cover all my costs today, then technically I don't have to work. That's the first thing. The second thing is working out by when you want to have that situation. Those two things are the, the crux of then plugging the gap between where you are and where you want to be and by when. And then you can use advisors to plug that gap and tell you specifically what it is you need to do. And again, property is a vehicle. It's just a vehicle to get to that endpoint, nothing else. Look, it's going to vary for everybody. I think that you can get as deep or as on the surface as you'd like, especially when we talk about property. It's so much money, a bit of borrowing, so you need to know the basics and that's super important and there's so much material out there nowadays you just got to choose the right mentors so to speak or the right things to read our advisors or our team got the best vested interest to make it work for us at the end of the day it's our future and we've decided to educate ourselves and at least know the bare minimum to know what's going on ask the right questions and make sure that everything that's been done is correct and follow the path that you're trying to go down to. The importance is 100%. you got to have the right team behind you for sure. Again, it's such an expensive journey. As much as it's the bank's money, it's still yours to repay. I don't want to scare anybody, but the numbers are pretty big, right? Property is a pretty decent, sizable asset. And so picking the right team is paramount. Now, how do you choose the right team? That's probably a very tricky question. From our office, we had a connection to our advisors from someone else that I trusted. And that was our main point. But having said that, when we used you, I didn't know you at all, Rusty. There was two things, right? The first one is you are investing yourself, which is extremely important because if you're not doing it yourself, and I'm not just saying one property, or I'm saying it in a pretty heavy way, then you don't have any idea what pain points investors go through. You don't know necessarily what fears they're going through. There's a lot of things that are very important. The advisor or the buyer's agent that is doing it already. And the second thing is you get a sense of whether someone's generally interested for the money or to help out now.
don't get me wrong, we all have bills to pay and you get a fee for it and that's normal. But there's a genuine interaction that happened at the start that made us trust you. Yeah, look, what we did from very early on is, is get a, a good team of advisors behind us. We started with a property strategy, so to work out our end goal and work out what was the gap between where we were and where we needed to be. And once we knew that, we knew roughly how many properties we needed by a certain time. And then it was about finding the right buyer agent. It's not something we do every day, whereas you pick a good buyer's agent, that's what they do day to day. So as much as we'd be transacting maybe one property a year, these people transact a lot more than us. And it's choosing the state, and then it's choosing the suburb, and then it's choosing the right property in that sub, and all that backed up by the data that is important and that, that makes them choose that specific area. From the start, we didn't really mind where the properties were we just wanted the best location for the cash that we had available essentially so we knew cash flow was extremely important it's a journey of between 10 and 20 years so you need to be able to have the cash flow to sustain that 10 to 20 years right now in an environment where the rates are pretty high so cash flow is not as good as a year and a half to two years ago and so as long as you able to absorb these fluctuations. So that was definitely a criteria that we wanted to meet, cash flow. And that comes with obviously the yield and the price of the property. And the second thing we know for a fact that we're probably not gonna stay in rental for ever. So once we knew from our advisor that once we've got up to a certain level, then we're very likely to sell some of our properties and what that means is it need to be appealing to a home buyer, not necessarily an investor. So it needs to be in a suburb that was appealing to families and that type of thing. So th those were really important criteria for us, as well as obviously the normal growth and economic growth and, and everything that goes with it. Yeah, so when we got a few properties forwarded to us, obviously that came through with a pretty lengthy report. From my perspective, I'm an accountant, so I like to have a look at the numbers and what's behind the facts and the data and the stats and everything else. So these reports were extremely good from my perspective. Had a variety of things that obviously cash flow was one of them. So a bit of an idea of what cash flow was, what it meant, depending on how much we're borrowing. You had obviously all the stats like the demographics, the income levels, whether they're families or how many kids, like everything to do with demographics, which obviously is important because once again, we're looking at properties that are appealing to families and homeowners at the end of the, day. the region, the economy of the region, the projects that are up and coming or as a work in progress in terms of infrastructure and that type of thing. So, and just to give you an example, probably because of not having the info with me, I wasn't necessarily a big fan of Western Australia, whereas uh, we got a few properties presented to us in the Western uh, Australian region and it was great because I could read the demographics, industry, what was going on in the region and, and it all made sense at, at the time. So that was a tremendous help for, for us for sure. Look, we never felt pressure in anything. In fact, we got a few properties presented to us over the course of our journey, but never felt pressured in anything, but, and that was great. And that's paramount. If you've got an advisor that is pressing you or you can feel he's aggressive, if you reject a property, then you've got the wrong person. Yeah, so the process is, and that's why it's so important to get the right team, because the process from start to finish, like even before we select the property, is just so smooth and easy. To be honest, it couldn't be any easier. So once you say yes to the property, there's a lot of things that need to happen. I'm talking about once the owner is happy to sell to us, that is. There's a lot of conveyance and things that need to happen. So selecting conveyance here, for instance, that's done for us. You don't have to go with the company that's been proposed to you, but why wouldn't you? Property managers is sourced, 
all the long document, all the boring sort of things that he's done. That's best with you. It's one of those things that when you do it the first time, it's very scary because there's so much to it. There's so much paperwork and legality and all that. So having the right team, it's again, so, so important. It makes everything so much easier and just the investment process so much easier and smoother. It's almost a set and forget sort of thing. And I don't forget about it. Obviously, every 12 months, we get them valued and see where it's going. But even from our first property, it was a set and forget. Realistically, if everything's set up properly, because again, I'm going to talk about cash flow because it's so important. If the cash flow and everything is set up properly and within whatever parameters you said were important to you, then you don't even feel that you've got properties or a property investment because it's all happening in the background. All comes back to your end point. Where do you want to get to? And, and it might be that one property is enough. I doubt it, but it might be. It all depends on your needs. It all depends on what it is you're trying to achieve. But obviously, once you've done it once, it's just easier. You know what's going on. By then, you've got the team and they've proven to you that they're the right team to work with, or they haven't. <laughs> and then you just need to change. But yeah, it all depends on your end point. It all starts with the end in mind. The first time around, there's so much just to get boring. It's a ludicrous amount of paperwork you got to sign. But if you've got a good broker, they're there to explain to you what you're signing and what it is, what it's for and all that stuff. Doing it again is definitely easier, for sure. You've set up your team so you can just go to the same team if you're happy with them and just do the same process over and over again as many times as you need to. We're extremely happy uh, with Rusty and the team. Again, it's been such a smooth process. From my perspective as an accountant, I had all the data and all the reports that I needed. And yeah, we definitely go with them again. If I talk about our journey, when we started, I was scared, skeptical. And to be honest with you, when I look back now, it's because of the lack of education and understanding of the whole piece. So the first thing we did is build our team, which gave us a lot of confidence. And at the same time, I started educating myself via podcast or articles or newsletters and then you start understanding how it works and once you understand the basics of how it works it's a no-brainer it's not scary anymore but again you gotta figure out what it is you want get the team get the education and then the fear will definitely go away